Hey guys, welcome to the channel. We've got something a little bit different today. Now we've got myself, I am a football referee, and we've got Gareth, who is a rugby referee. Um, and I just wanted to discuss what the differences are, what the similarities are, and what we can kind of take from the other sport and use in our sport. So Gareth, can you introduce yourself? Uh, what do you do in terms of refereeing? What standard and things like that? Hi everyone, I'm, uh, I'm Gareth Trickett, I'm from Rosendale in Lancashire and I've been a rugby union referee since 2008. I'm currently an RFU level 9 referee which is kind of around about the, the mid-table of, of refereeing. Before that I was a rugby league referee but for reasons I don't really want to go into I, I packed in rugby league refereeing, a bit of politics involved in that one and... An offer came up to go as the same rugby league to the dark side, to the 15 as by code, and I uh, up sticks and left and went to, to rugby union. I think it's interesting that you um, you've done both, because quite often there is that divide, um, you know, north versus south, league versus union. So that's really interesting that you've actually done both. So I find that fascinating that you've got you can see both sides almost. Um, yeah. So I, it, one thing I do find there's the difference is um, the system of, of your levels. Now, for football, we go from more or less level seven, which is a new referee, to level one, which is professional referee. Um, mm -hmm. I'm So for me, I'm a level five. I would like to think I'm capable of getting to level four, but it's doing a fitness test and not good for fitness. Mm -hmm. Um so I'm sort of mid mid table ish, ish. Mm. Um, so I, I would assume that you're slightly higher, maybe a level or two higher than me. Um, but I don't know if the system's slightly different. If the pyramid is slightly smaller in rugby, anyway. Well, it's slightly bigger uh, in rugby union. As a new referee, you would come in at level fifteen. Oh Christ, that's um, a lot of levels. Did, well, when I did my. Um, course as it was called then it was called the Elra course which was the entry level referee award and it was done over two days in a classroom and then that got you part one and part two mm -hmm. part two also covered safeguarding then the part three was done over five games three of which you actually assessed yourself and reflected back to your training you completed a reflective one then in two games you got another referee to come and watch you Provided they were happy, they'd sign you off, and you don't stay at 15 very long. I've never known a referee stay at level 15 more than a couple of months. And you can generally scoot up 15, 14, 13, 12 very quickly. Uh, the referees who stay around about 12 and 13 are usually guys who just want to do a club game or a low-level game. They're not really interested in refereeing but they do do a valuable job I don't, I don't want to ever knock any referee yeah. because I think they all do a valuable job where I live up here in the northwest we have the guys in the association who are level 12 to 15 valuable guys they do sort of like 4 15 rugby vets rugby that sort of thing they don't really they're not worried they're not referee. worried about progressing up the ladder no. or they're no. doing it for the enjoyment rather than yeah. progressing yeah Okay. Or you might get someone who's coming in who wants to try the hand first, or they'll do a few games in association, get the, get the feet on the table. Yeah. Then join a, a referee society. I'm with Manchester Society. That's my local society that covers majority of the North West, uh, covers all of Lancashire, all Greater Manchester, and the eastern side of Cheshire. Okay. And then our colleagues in Liverpool do the western side of Cheshire, Liverpool, and the Isle of Man. Okay. And then from level 11 to level 6 is society referees. And you have your games appointed by the society. They'll tell you, this month, right, you're doing this team, this team, blah, blah, blah. Cover all the open age teams in the Northwest. We also cover the under-18s on a Sunday and yeah. the under-17s, the ladies. And then during the week, also cover universities, schools and colleges as well and sometimes on Saturday I have been known to double head I've done a oh, school in the morning it's hard work then, than that and then an, then an open edge game in the afternoon yeah so. I, I, I did a, a, a double game on a, on last Sunday and 
it was exhausting. And it was it was last Sunday when all we had all weathers, all seasons in one day. Um, yeah, sun, and on that. sleet, and everything. Um, but let's get into. You had a question. Uh, yeah, you go first. Ask ask a question, yeah. and, and we can both oh. sort of answer it. Yeah, what what got you what got you to become a referee then, as a in the football sense? Um, so football football has always been my life, <laughs> um, and so I played from youth level from the age of from the age of eight, I think. Um, from the age of kind of eighteen, I was constantly getting muscle strains, never real injuries, but muscle strains, and I kept playing, and I think it just got tougher and tougher and it's frustrating because I knew I wasn't old and I was getting these strains and it was frustrating and and it got to it got to a state where I just couldn't physically do it so I stopped playing because it was just getting uncomfortable and I knew I couldn't physically keep going with that with the muscle strains and the asthma I just couldn't keep to the same standard so I stopped playing Saturdays and I was playing an okay standard. It wasn't just Saturday league. It was it was a decent enough standard. Um, and I thought, I still want to be on that field. I still want to be on that field because I can contribute. Um, and I, and I, I don't know why. I just, refereeing came to my head. Bear in mind, I'm also a football coach. So it's not like I'm not still involved, but I wanted to be on that pitch. I've probably got short man syndrome as well. So that, you know, being a referee that comes hand in hand sometimes. Um, so I, I, I took the course, I did did the referee course, obviously Hampshire FA, started basically refereeing on Saturdays. You know, it stopped me going to watch Southampton play, refereed on Saturdays. But it was interesting because when I first started playing, I could imagine the ball coming towards me. I could imagine the ball coming towards me and I could imagine myself kicking that ball. And so I thought, I've got to, I've got to get playing again. And so I then started playing Sunday League. Now, Sunday League is obviously low level. When you say Sunday League, it's the bottom level sort of thing. Played for a couple of years and basically I pulled my hamstring and it went twang. And I knew I couldn't recover and I stopped playing and I've slowly focused on, on refereeing. But I started refereeing basically because of injury. That's, you know... So how about yourself? Why have you started rather than playing? What you know? Um, similar similar story really. Uh, injuries. Uh, I had a knee injury, which was caused when I went to a tackle. Uh, I it was my own fault. I tackled it with a, a poor technique. I felt my knee go pop. Uh, I was out for a few months. I came back and in my second comeback game, I broke my ankle in training. Uh, one lad thought he'd be he. he he tried me clever and he, he t- the ankle tapped me and my foot went one way and my ankle went the other and I just landed in a big heap. And the doctor sort of said, if you want to carry on walking, packing and rugby. And I'm, I'm, I was only in my mid-20s and I'm thinking, I, I, I want to be involved. I want yeah. I still want to be there. And, so, and, and someone actually said to me, well, you kind of, because I'd actually done a bit of refereeing in sort of training. I'd, I'd refereed a bit. So I started out in rugby league and the army's very big on rugby. It's a huge sport in the army, both league mm-hmm. and union. There's two sports in the army. I know there are others, and people will, will probably correct me, but boxing and rugby, the two big ones. I think, yeah, 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 I think so. And I was sort of getting, I was getting up to a reasonable standard, but never really excelled at playing either. I, I, I knew I could get around rugby pitch, and I knew how to con the referee a few times as well. Cause you kind of. <laughs> to con in the referee so I thought well and I also had a bit of an atrocious disciplinary record I got three red <laughs> cards and in my last one I decided I was already retiring and my punishment was to do a referee's course oh really as, as part of the punishment so you're part, you partly ref- forced to become a referee so in a way it was you were going to do a referee's course and you could understand what it's like to be a referee so I did the course and I sat on the qualification for a while I didn't do much with it and then someone said, we're short of referees, you've done the court, go on, go and do a game. And I was like, really? Okay. So they chucked me the whistle and off I went. And I, I muddled through a bit and then I got, actually someone came across and actually advised me and coached me a little bit. Mm. And I went from there, you know, it, 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 I started out in Germany, I was refereeing out over there, both 
uh, military games and civilian games all with German rugby clubs, which was an interesting uh, experience. Then I came back to the UK. I joined Hampshire Society. I had two years with them. And then I moved up up here to uh, to Manchester. And what I've noticed coming up north is because a lot of the guys up here play rugby 12 months a year, they'll play league in the summer yeah. and uni in the winter. There are The stand up here is a lot higher. Like I said, I'm at level nine as a, as a referee. I can probably get to level eight at a push. But a level nine game here is probably a higher stand than a level nine game down south because yeah. the guys, you can see the difference in their handling techniques because they use in Lee, you've got to have good handling because if you lose the ball, you lose possession. You lose I think. I think we've. I think it's sort of similar in in the lower leagues of football, in that, for example, we know that the Wessex the Wessex League, which is Hampshire and and slightly into Dorset and whatnot, mm. is a fairly good standard. But then there's some other counties around us that are just are just nowhere near. So when you say not necessarily the same um, as in you said that the players play league and rugby. So not necessarily the same way as that. But what I mean is by where you say you're about level nine um, for football, that would be level four slash level five. Mm -hmm. So level four or five games in the Wessex division are a lot higher standard than a four to five game just to the west of us. Um, So it is interesting how standard and, and... each league in rugby as well is allocated a level uh, that the referees will yeah. come from. So, for instance, Lancashire up here, we have two leagues. The Premiership is set at level seven, mm-hmm. and Division One is set at level nine. So, if you're in a level seven game, you could get a level seven, six, or five referee. Because the referee, as the pyramid goes up, level six is what we call the federation, and that is. The best referees from the whole of the Northwest, so Cumbria, Lancashire, Manchester, yeah. Cheshire, and Staffs all come together. At level five, they then go into regional groups. We have North Group being the North, so it's the whole North of England. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've, I think we've got a similar. I think as there becomes less referees, it, it you're, the referees are then controlled by a different, mm. almost a different organisation, almost. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, they, still belong to, they still belong to our society. Yeah, um, yeah. But we don't see them. You know, they'll mm. still come to meetings and they'll help us out, like on a Sunday, maybe, or during the week. But predominantly, their Saturday games are dictated by North Group. The, the appointment process is slightly different. Yeah. They, it, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then um, four, four, level four to level one are the national panel referees, and their games are appointed by Twickenham. Mm, and yeah. level one is the Premiership, with you, you, you weigh in Barnes. Uh, then you've got two, which is the national leagues, three and four are the, are the regional national leagues. And then elite level is the international referees. So I think, I think it is fairly similar. That is actually sounds, from what you're saying, it sounds pretty much the same as football. Yeah. Um, yeah, it sounds pretty much the same same as football in that mm-hmm. sense. Um, now, I'd like to ask, in your refereeing days that you're still in, mm-hmm. what is what do you enjoy most about it? Like, what what gets you on that field? You know, why? It's the ability to give thirty people a safe and enjoyable game of rugby. And to be able to contribute to that factor of you are there because if you're not there, they can't have a game. That that's the saying in rugby: mm-hmm. no ref, no game. Yeah, lovers or haters, we're there to do a job, you know. And I've refereed, you know, from in my own club. I've refereed across the sort of northwest and at ninety nine point nine 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 percent of clubs. The, mo- the motto in rugby is what happens on the pitch stays on the pitch. Mm-hmm. You don't drag it back to the clubhouse. 99.9% of people are always happy to, after the game, just come and have a chat about rugby. You, know, yeah. you, you come and sit in the bar and just talk rugby. You know, you, or if the Six Nations are, I'll stay behind and watch the England game or even some of the other nations if they're playing. It's that ability to just get out on a pitch on a Saturday or a Sunday and just give people an enjoyable game of rugby. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as someone said, once said to me when I was in the army, the best thing where they said, 
what do you be why are you referee for? I said, I get to rub and down and keep fit. And officers have to call me, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I, I find it so strange uh, that, that rugby referees get called sir. Uh, it's, it's, uh, we, we, I, I'm, I, I'm not, I just, I'm not, I'm not hard. If they call me ref, I'm happy with that. You know, someone says, oh, uh, uh, ref, you know, excuse me. I'm like, yeah, no problem. I don't have to call me sir. I'm going to divine right to it. But yeah. it is a pro, it is a protocol over the years that you refer to the ref as sir. You know, it's always, it's always been uh, it, a, it sort of instilled into me as a player when I was younger. The only you time, refs, the only time I've been called sir whilst refereeing is is when Americans have come over to the country to play, and the Americans call you sir. And and I, I said it's just so strange having that. Um, I think my so sort of similarish why I ref what I enjoy about refereeing. Now, obviously, I enjoy. I, I said um, in a video the other day that the reason I do youth football. Um, which is a funny thing you said about how you kept getting asked to referee the odd game. That is the reason why I got into youth doing youth football on Sundays because my uncle was a was a manager of one of the youth teams and was like, "Oh, you're a ref. Can you come and referee?" And then then that club from the other age groups then asked me when they're short. So in the end, I just like, yeah, all right, just put me on the league and I'll I'll do them every week. But so there's this the one reason why I do enjoy doing youth football is because. I'm there teaching the players. I'm there guiding them through the game. It's not just about blowing the whistle and showing cards. It's it's trying to get the youth players not to behave like the adults of today. And what we do in, in rugby is when the guys are going, when the lads are coming from under 15 mm. to under 17, is when they will first hit properly appointed referees. Up till then, it's usually been either a club referee they might occasionally get a proper referee, usually for a cup final or a cup game. But generally, sometimes it's one of the coaches refereeing. Which doesn't help. So, don't... Uh, if in, so in football, we, we've, um, we have appointed referees from about the age of 11, sometimes mm. younger, sometimes younger, um, what we've got, mini soccer it's called. But I don't think, I think there would be more problems if it was just a normal, uh, one of the managers or, or mm. one of the parents refereeing from when they start getting testosterone in them yeah. in football. That's why we hit them at 17. They get, and one of the things I've actually done and other referees done, you go to your club before the season starts when you get the new batch of Colt players in because at 17 you refer to as a Colt. Mm. And my saying yeah. to them always is, this is your two-year apprenticeship. And they say, what do you mean, sir? I said, this is your first experience with proper referees. If you transgress the laws, you are going to get jumped on from a great height. Mm. And at the minute, it's nice and cuddly because the club look after you for a red card. Yeah. The second you hit 18, you're going for a trip to Haydock Park, and trust me, it's not enjoyable. You will feel like you'll be on Judge Rinder by the end of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it, it helps that, you know, as a referee, I'm also attached to my club. I can talk to them early on. And they explain what referees are looking for at mm. the tackle, at the breakdown. And one of the things I'll also say to parents is, I guarantee, if anyone's going to transgress the law, it'll be one of you. And they'll look at me and, say, and they'll say, well, what do you mean? I said, because as far as you're concerned, your little Johnny can't do anything wrong. And this big, horrible man with a whistle comes along and blows it. And suddenly it's like your world has ended. And yeah. I'm like, you've got nothing against your kids. But if they if they break the, the, the rugby law... There has to be consequences. This is one of the things in football that um, the whole thing where players think you've got something against them. And <laughs> and I say to them, I couldn't care less who wins. You know, I don't know who you are. I don't care who you are. You could, mm. you could be a Premier League player. I just don't really care. Yeah. I, you know, I don't look at, I don't look at the league standings before a game. I know referees do, but I don't mm. because what happens on the pitch doesn't necessarily, you know, it, it's, it doesn't reflect anything else. I'm focusing on that game. Don't care who you are. Don't care who wins. Um, I, I've had it where people. I've had it where people have said, "Oh, they've been saying this on Facebook this week." I'm like, I'm not interested. I don't care what you said. Someone on Facebook all week, or the game last year, so and so belted someone, and the blind. Oh, I'm like, not interested. Mm. I'm only interested in the here and now. I went to one club, and in rugby, if a club gets five red cards across the whole club. They are then hauled up in front of the RFU. Really? 
for bringing the game into disrepute. That's five in a season. Yeah, I think we'll come. Um, we'll, we'll come back to that because that yeah. I think obviously I think we both had have a question about the governing bodies. We'll come back yeah. to that one because I think that one's a big thing in refereeing and a big difference. Yeah. Um, I, I was going to say um, one. I don't know if it's it's quite contradictory to what I actually believe should happen. But one thing in football why I enjoy refereeing is I love the adrenaline. And I love Mm. the adrenaline, and that is the adrenaline when things kick off. When parents kick off, when players kick off, when managers kick off, it's you your heart rate gets going and it's and although it's although it's something that shouldn't happen, as in, you know, you shouldn't be getting the descent, you shouldn't be getting people screaming and bad tackles and it gets you really hyped up. Mm. And it's a really exciting feeling. And so if it, if it kicks off for you in football, how how do you what what do you have like a set way you've got to approach it, or do you have to get in the middle, or do you have to step back? Or um, is is in? Do you mean what we're told to do, or what I specifically do? Well, Bo, do you have like a set protocol, or what's your your personal approach? To um, so things like mass confrontations they happen. You never know when they're going to happen. Normally, mm-hmm. come out of nowhere. Um, we are literally told, especially if there's three of us, so middle guy and two two liners, yeah. we're told so for me personally, especially some people some referees, big referees will get involved, split them up. Mm. That's fine. For me, I have no interest in getting involved in them. So if I'm in the middle, I will watch them, I will take notes if I need to and I'll let it burn itself out. Um, because I do not want to get swung at because I will yeah. fall. Um, but as, as a team, we, are, we, we tell each other and we're told, get a different view, come onto the pitch, get a different view, but, but you don't need to get involved because it will fizzle itself out. And if you have a view, you can then deal with it. Everyone take notes. You know, it's normally the, the, the first person to make, you know, the tackle or the punch, the, the mm. person who retaliated, and then normally the goalkeeper that's come all the way up the pitch, um, yeah. you know, th- who's run the furthest of the pitch just to get yeah. involved. And then you deal with that afterwards. Um, yeah, I, but... I, had a, I had an incident once where um, I had ARs and I took up a position and I had one to one side, one to the other. And we had, we, had, we were mic'd up as well. We got who uh, thrown the first punch. We yeah. got who started it. They were both going to go for 10 minutes. And then one guy ran over my shoulder and actually shoved me out the way. And I shouted at him, number 12, stay out, stay out. And you're on straight and bond jaws from the back of the head. It was the easiest red card I've ever given in my life. Yeah, but it's because... about getting that view, isn't it? Rather yeah. than getting straight in there trying to split them up, you can't see anything no. when you split them up. No, let him fizzle it out. Um, the only time I think the only time I've ever actually gone into military to intervene was when I thought one lad was getting seriously hurt, and I thought, no, nah, I need to. Inter-. And thankfully, the coaches joined, and we dragged this one lad off. He just lost it, um, and his coach even said. If you're not going to send him off, he said, I'll send him off myself. And he he just completely <laughs> lost it. It happens. It, it's one thing. I think... It's, a, um, it's an adrenaline thing. I think the main thing, and, and, it, and it's an issue in, a, in the fact that in football refereeing, there's different tolerance levels. Massive disparities in different mm. tolerance levels. Now, I would think I am... For, for tackles, I think I'm quite lenient because I think... Mm-hmm players are too soft not too soft that's the wrong word a foul is a foul but i think yeah players will happily fall over when there's actually no contact and things so i i like the game to play and to flow and and if the players want to play then we play however i like to think i crack down on this uh discipline people Mm -hmm. screaming at me i will not accept it now either if, if someone screams at me don't expect me to speak to them nicely and they get mm. they are fuming at that. If they're screaming at you and you don't speak nicely back to them, and they're like, "You can't talk to me like that." What? Uh, yeah, hang on a minute. Sorry, hang on. You it just, works, yeah. it works both ways. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, <laughs> you you know you should be respectful and all that. Yeah. What? I, you know, I, I think in the I've, in the whole time I've, I've refereed, I've sent one coach off for giving me a, a sarcastic round of applause, and it was a youth game as well. And I thought you should be setting the example. And like I said, I was mic'd up as well, so my assessor heard it, and he agreed with me afterwards. And I once sent a spectator off who was three sheets to the wind yeah. and was calling me every name of the sun. And I politely asked her just to be quiet, please. 
And I just said, behind you's a club, Iris, go and put yourself in it. <laughs> and the club chairman actually jumped on it. And I, I know the guy very well. He's, he's an ex-referee as well. He jumped on her and said, go and apologise to the referee and then go home. Good, yeah. And, and uh, I, well, this this Saturday, this Saturday, I, I dealt with um, home team, away team. The home team manager kept screaming onto the pitch, oh, ref, that was a foul and everything. And I went over to him politely. I said, listen, keep this off the pitch. You know, that's fine if you disagree. Talk to me after mm. the game. I will happily explain things. But keep it quiet. Keep it to yourself, please. Absolutely fine after that. However, the other, the away team manager, he, constant, exactly the same, screaming, you know, that's a foul, that's not a foul, etc., etc. And I, I gave him a warning from the pitch. I then came over and gave him another warning. And I said, he did it again. I said, we're not carrying on until you're gone. He had a little fit. When he, he kind of disappeared-ish. Um, there's only so many places you can go when you're in a public field. But um, after the game, he came over and was apologetic because he yeah, knew. Sometimes. But but the reason he was apologetic is because he knew he was going to get in trouble. He knew I was going to put the discipline in it and he's almost hoping that I wouldn't by being nice to me. Um, but that shows the difference in people off. react. Yeah. Even people I've sent off before today... They've come to me after and gone, sir, I'm sorry. And I'm like, don't apologise to me. You know, it, you know, I accept it, but I just write the report. I haven't got it in for you. But I think you said in one of the videos, there's two words I can't stand. Cheat and see you next Tuesday. Yeah. They're, they're two you just Call do me not accept. It. Bye bye. Mm. Bye bye. Yeah. And me personally, I, I also will be more lenient to someone who is reckless rather than someone who's malicious. If it's a reckless mistimed tackle and there's no intent to hurt someone, and I can see it from having been a player, yeah. what they were trying to do, and I've say got a lower level game where the technique isn't as good, mm -hmm. I will take a more lenient approach than if I was doing a higher level game where I would expect your standards to be good because you're training and you're playing in a, a tight league where you can't afford to get sent off then I'm going to be more rigid on it. So in football, on, on challenges, for example, and tackles and things, we've got a three-base system. We've got careless, which is nothing. You you, you may give a free kick and you, and you carry on. You may give a, war, a word to them. You know, careless is quite often what you... Lesser skilled players, you know. Um, then you've got reckless, which is a mistimed challenge. Um, they're going for the ball, but it's it's... It's not. It's 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 that level above careless. There was some intent, yeah. possibly, um, and then you've got dangerous. So you know, careless, nothing. Reckless mm -hmm. is a is a yellow, and, and obviously dangerous is a red. And obviously, granted, you get then persistent. So if someone is persistently careless, yeah, that then steps up to being reckless. And so you've got that system, um, which I don't necessarily from watching. It doesn't seem like rugby has that um, to rugby. to the same level because there's less, yeah. maybe a little less subjectivity. To the, to the challenges? I don't know if you would foul agree. Playing foul, foul playing rugby, the RFU issued a guideline. Uh, in fact, it came from World Rugby, which is the world governing body. Mm. So I think FIFA, think FIFA for rugby. And their default is any kind of uh, foul play, you start at a red card. Yeah. Your entry point is red. You then say to yourself, can I mitigate it down? And you look for factors such as... Um, the ball carrier may be dropping high at the last minute or the tackler starts low and it comes up around the chain so it mm -hmm. starts sort of down here and it ends up here but just by physics uh, you look at things such as uh, one of the big ones at the minute is no arms tackling where you just leave with the shoulder Yeah. and if there's any kind of contact with the head or neck now it's, it's a straight bye bye given the, the concussion protocols well, the entry point generally is you say, you start red, can I bring it down to yellow or even penalty only? So, so possibly that is a big difference in, in football and rugby and the fact that it's mm. it's almost the other way around that the approach is. Um, we're starting from a careless. You're starting from a dangerous, almost, if, yeah. if in, that, in that scale, yeah. which is interesting. And, and, and But that shows in the discipline at the end of the day. Mm. You know, if a football player knows that I'm starting with a careless, you know, oh, I can get away with the first tackle. You know, whereas in, in rugby, it seems that actually you've got to be careful because if you make that one wrong move, you uh -huh. start from the real serious punishment. 
so that is a that's a huge difference and and maybe that is is part of the the discipline you know maybe football should go the other way and and be more disciplined in that sense the big big thing at the minute is head and neck contact any sort of contact up here you're looking at a red these days yeah Um, the uh, the other one is what we call the tip tackle and that's where a player goes and the sort of feet end up up here and they come down yes if the head on neck if the head on neck hits the ground first it's a straight red Mm. if it's shoulder down it's a yellow and then the other thing you can look at is, did they bring them down with care? Because uh, I remember one game, I think it was in the Lions tour, Anthony Watson was playing for the Lions, hit one of the New Zealand players, I, I can't remember the game it was in, but he, he hit him, went above the, the the 90, as we call it, so he's in, he's in this sort of position, yeah. realised what he'd done, and actually just put him down quite gently. It was brilliant to watch. And it, I thought the ref at the time was a bit always oh, was going for a yellow person. Me, I'd have said penalty only. Or even, you know what? You've done your obligation there. I might have a bit biased because obviously it's the Lions, but... In, in in rugby, then, you're you're looking out for the other team as well as your own mm. team. And that that's, you know, it, as, a, as, a foot, as a footballer, and, and, I, and I say this even as I'm playing, I had no thought for the other team. Footballers don't. Mm. I would like to. I, I. I don't think I'm the only one. I think pretty much every footballer is the same. You don't think about the other team. They are your opposition. They're the enemy. You, you know. You're doing everything you can to beat them. You're not there to look after them. Um, I wrote. Most... In, I, I wrote into Rugby World once, which is one of the rugby magazines, because I remember a game I refereed, and it was Blackburn against Sedgley Park. I can name the two teams because this was in print because I put it in. Cup game. It was horrible, horrible weather. It was a day after the Paris attacks had happened. Yeah. So we'd had a huge... There was four, all four teams were playing at home that day. We had a huge two-minute silence with with eight teams, eight rugby teams on one pitch. Mm-hmm. Then we all broke off to go to our respective pitches. And Blackburn were losing at the time, and they had the ball almost on the line. They had a huge overlap, and Blackburn's captain went, Sir, stop, stop, stop. I said, what's up, mate? He went to play a face down in the water yeah. and it was the opposition player and he's seen it and he stopped the game moved everyone out of the way and literally dragged his lad out of a puddle before he drowned Christ and you, and you just thought, wouldn't see that in football you know, I went up and shook his hand I said, I said mate I said cheers I said I didn't even see it mm. and, and that to me was sportsman you know the sportsmanship you do see in rugby I mean not everyone's an angel I'll, I'll yeah. admit, you know we're not all we're not on a pedestal in rugby we do have our I think in these in these uh, conversations and a lot of my a lot of the videos I watch and the comments, you are uh, like you generalize. You have to generalize um, mm-hmm. because there's always uh, wrong ones in every sport, you know, in, in any walk of life. Um, yeah, you know that's sadly. So, you, but you have to generalize in that sense. Um, but yeah, um, another big difference I would like to think is the governing bodies. Um, so the next the next point, I think we were going to ask the same question more or less is kind of what is the difference in the i said the rfu or the rfl is it the rfl yeah the rfl yeah. um compared to say the fa fifa when uh, uh, we look on on the mainly on the referee side of things because you know i think yeah. that's the main subject of the video when how much support do you think if so how much support do you get as a referee in say discipline disciplining the players um it will start with if you send the player off you, you submit a report to the the county RFU, which in my case is lancashire mm-hmm. they will then decide they'll look at the report and decide whether to call the player to a hearing or to offer them an option to plead guilty on paper and that's where the player says i did it okay I'm a naughty boy. I'll take my punishment wherever you decide. And that's, by the way, it's a straightforward sending off. Like, for instance, someone's punched someone. Yeah. You sent them off. Done. Two weeks, bye-bye. Don't be a naughty boy. If it's... Um, they may decide to call them to a hearing. And if the player says, no, I'm not guilty, it can become like a bit like a magistrate's court. And there'll be a panel will hear the player's evidence... And they'll listen to the referee's report. And the player, you're there as an expert witness because you are the only person on that pitch who is genuinely impartial. Mm-hmm. 
So if you've sent player A off for clotheslining player B, and player A say, no, it wasn't me, it was my, you know, it, um, and you're like, well, hang on, I saw you because you were wearing 15, mm-hmm. you've got black hair, blah, 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 blah. And then 99 times out of 100, they will take the referee's report as read, so your report writing has to be pretty yeah. good. They are very hot on any kind of abuse to referees. Um, I've only ever sent three players off for abuse because I'm, I'm quite thick-skinned. And I'm not a precious little snowflake. I think, as I think you have. I then. think you have to be to be a referee in any sport, though, don't you? You've, there's times when it's abuse, and there's times when you turn a bit of a deaf ear and you mm-hmm. go, let it over my head. Yeah. But when it's sustained, when it's aimed at you, and when sometimes it involves your families or your religion or your ethnic background or your nationality, yeah. then you cross the line. Mm-hmm. And the longest ban I've ever seen given out in rugby was life with a minimum of 35 years. Christ. And that was a guy who punched a referee so hard he knocked his three front teeth out. Not only did he get done by the RFU, the police then arrested him for assault. And he finished up getting hauled off to court. Now, obviously, especially as I started watching rugby um, during the Six Nations recently, so it's not been long at all. And there's a huge thing, of as, as all rugby fans seem to know, is that um, the the governing bodies, RFU and whatnot, they have basically said that these things must happen if, say, mm-hmm. a head to shoulder, you know, they must yeah. happen. So as a referee, you must do that. And we will yeah. back you. We will back you. Yeah. And I think the difference with football is, because it's subjective, um, I, really, football needs to be able to um, the the FA and FIFA and things. They need to say to the referees: if this happens, you must do this. We will back you. You must do this, mm. and and that would get that uh, that would allow football referees to be all on the same level, all give out mm-hmm. the same punishments and discipline, because at the moment, the ref the 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 the, the football governing bodies. None of that's in place. None of that's in place. You know, it's down to you to decide what's abuse, what's dissent, what's what's a foul, mm. what's what's a dangerous challenge. There's so much more subjectivity about it that, to- like I said, about tolerance levels. Um, there's and- certainly in, in, in rugby. There's certainly you know a lot, a lot is left open for individual interpretation, mm-hmm. and you'll you'll notice when you watch a Northern Hemisphere referee against a Southern Hemisphere referee that their interpretation of the laws can be different mm-hmm. and and it can irritate it can it can irritate northern hemisphere teams when they go down south and southern hemisphere yeah. teams when they come up here but like like you you quite rightly said world rugby after every world cup world rugby get all the participating teams together all the referees together all the coaches and they will sit down at the minute it's had to be done virtually because of covid yeah they will literally analyse the World Cup and they will say, is there any laws we need to change? And they will ask, everyone gets a, gets a say. Even the minor teams who might have only just qualified by the back door mm-hmm. get a say. Yes. But and it... I think that's a very, very good thing because there's nothing worse. This is one thing rugby league does very badly, changing laws halfway through a season. Oh, really? Yeah. It's got to at least be it's before the season starts, surely. Yeah. But that, that's that's but that is that is something that I'm, I'm massively noticing that the RFU or, or IFL they want to make the game better mm. and not not um, with all this this European Super League nonsense going on. Someone said about it, the Premier League is just a show it, and, and football is just a show now. It shouldn't be just a show, you know. Rugby, the authorities in rugby want to make the game better. Better, safer, um, you know, not just, it's not just about how spectacular it is, because by doing that, you're not thinking about the participants. And then football, and for the refereeing side, you, you still see how much abuse the referees take, um, and, and what, the, what the footballers get away with. 
so the, the the difference is in football the are the the fa and fifa they don't want to help they don't want to make things better they want to think about money they want to um, think about how many people are watching um and the excitement and the controversy that that's that's the difference i've i've seen I mean, yeah you you all get controversy in rugby i mean everyone like i say everyone's got an opinion and what I always say at my level to players is when they say, oh, didn't you see that? I say, I've got two eyes. I can't see everything. I'm, I haven't got Austin Healy here with BT Sport, mm. you know, a video referee. I mean, Wayne Barnes, best referee in the world, I think, at the minute. We'll, we'll get but, comments saying he's rubbish now if people have watched this long. <laughs> it's my opinion. I, I think he's the best referee in the world. I think, And also, Dean Richards and Steve Diamond agree with me on that one. Two <laughs> premiership in the rugby. Both said Wayne Barnes is by far the best referee because he's so consistent. Mm -hmm. But he's got two ARs, two assistant referees, a fourth official and a video referee. I've got one whistle, a yellow red card and a pair of eyes. Yeah, I won't see everything. And I, I, I do point this out to people that I'm only human. Yeah, I will, I will, I will make mistakes because I won't see things. But I will always give you what I see. My yeah. call is my call. Mm -hmm. And that's a good thing is that 99 times out of 100, you accept, it is accepted. Because the one thing I do like about rugby, and I think football could benefit from, is for descent. You march the team 10. You will march them 10 metres down the pitch. And if you carry on, you march them another 10. I So I've had this comment, and I don't know, personally, I don't know if that would work in football it would only really work if the free if a free kick, for example, mm. gets close enough to take a shot or it's close enough to become a penalty. Because the difference mm. in rugby is it's about territory. In football, yeah. they happily pass back to the defence and start again. So I'm not mm. sure if that would necessarily work in football for that mm. reason. But the idea is there that is correct. Um, um, it, it's just I, another I, I, tool, isn't it? I think the most I marched one team was 40 metres and the okay. captain ran over in the end, grabbed the player and said, you don't shut up. He said, I'll knock you out myself. God. And I was like, and I, I had my hand on the yellow card. I thought, I'm just going to see if he shuts up. Because if one more, he's going. Now, some people have said to me, you should have done after two. I thought, no, I'm teaching him a lesson because his team will now get hold of him. There's certain people that don't, just team. don't know how to stop talking, yeah. do they? He, he was just going on and on and on. And I went, uh, he, he committed an offence, penalty. Oh, ref, that's a joke, that is. Right, OK, let's go 10. You don't get a... You don't, right, let's go another 10. Are you really sure you're... Uh, three F words coming at me. And I went, one more. I said, and you can go and sit on the naughty step for 10 mm. minutes. Let's have, a, let's have a think about it. There's one judge on this pitch, and it's me. It ain't you. Yeah, I, 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 so, like I said, I do like the idea of that. You know, you give a decision, they want to keep moaning, and you have that option to move forward. And and it and if there's a way to implement that in football, it's mm. a, I'm I, it, it, in a in a, in in more of a football related way, then it's another yeah. tool that, and it can only be. I mean, a maybe thing. maybe the free kick you could roll the ball forward ten, and then they suddenly it was a free kick on you know, on the halfway line. Now it's yeah a free kick thrown into the half, and yeah you start thinking to yourself, my better because I've what I remember actually listening to. Um, I think it was David Ellery, the the, the football yeah, referee, yeah, yeah, and David it actually Ellery. played him trying to get Ashley Cole to come to him. And Ashley Cole's turned around and showed his back to him. I thought, if that were rugby, you'd just be off. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I get that, and I have to tell them, come here now. I'm not coming. To yeah. you. Sometimes you'll this, uh, and, and you see this. I, I don't know if you've seen any clips of um, Zlatan and Ibra Ibrahimovic when the referee is there standing, telling him to come, telling Ibra Ibra Ibrahimovic to come to him. And in the end, the referee walks to him. So you see straight away who's in charge. You know, uh, it's painful. Um, I just want to—I I, want to go on one more point. The last, last thing, last thing. Um, now, personally, I don't think there's much a rugby referee can take from football of how football referees do it. You might see something slightly different. I think there's more that a, a football referee can take from rugby and use in their game, which I would like to think I've started doing. But is there anything you think that you could take from a football referee? I, I think you, one thing is you guys have got to be, uh, and rugby referees are quite fit anyway, I think you've got to be a lot, a lot fit, and some of your 
fitness training that I've seen football referees go through, I think, could benefit us in rugby. And the other one, I think, is the fact you've got to make decisions. We get a little bit of thinking time. I think you guys are going to make an instant, yeah. do I blow or don't I blow? And I think your decision-making has got to be on point. Because what I found some of the level one referees were doing at Twickenham was running up to the top of the stairs at Twickenham, coming back down and doing a word search. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. It, 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 I'll tell you what, you try doing a word search when you're blowing out your... Yeah. Um, <laughs> It's all that's certainly it. different. Making, that's certainly different. Making decisions under pressure. Yeah, someone will come up with it, and they uh, they liked it. That's interesting. So, uh, yeah. So, one one question for yourself. Yeah. Who's your referee? You think is the the best referee in football, or has been in the past? In England, in if I if I specifically say England, I think everyone yeah. knows in the world it was probably Kalina because Kalina. he was a scary looking bloke. He was the sort of character you know you wouldn't mess with. Um, But I think in recent times for for the English game, uh, Mark Clattenburg. Mark Mark Clattenburg. Because, yes, you still got the whole Man United thing where people would say how he gave Man United certain decisions. But he was was good with making the decisions. Um, He was consistent. He was fair. Granted, he got things wrong. But so did all referees. So do all referees. Mm. But he, I would like to think he'd come across as being honest, um, likeable. And I think that's an un, un, under, uh, under... Underestimation. No, not an underestimated. No, um, an underappreciated characteristic of being a referee is being likeable sometimes. Um, knowing, you... knowing which players you can talk to mm. and be friendly and a bit banter with are the ones that you have to be serious and 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 sometimes not talk to at all um so if if, for refereeing i think him i I certainly think he has been one of the best referees in in modern times for sure i've actually got three rugby referees who uh i rate highly or have retired first one's wayne barnes by far the most consistent referee in rugby might not get it might not agree with him but he is consistent and if he's going to be, you know, even if he's, if it, you don't think it's right, he will do the same for both teams. Yeah. It's, it's always that consistency with Barnsley. Nigel Owens, for the best man manager in, in world rugby. I, I think everyone would, I think everyone would agree on that sense because you know that you know that this is not soccer. He had a way yeah. with words, clearly. Yeah, and he, he, in a way, and Nigel will probably admit it. He used that for the fact that sometimes from his decision making wasn't great but he could get by with the way he could talk to players and even if they didn't agree with him they would accept it and move on mm-hmm. but one very under very very underrated referee who never gets any aware of it was Jerome Garces the French referee who refereed the last World Cup final and he was so precise in his decision making not to mention one of the fittest referees I've ever seen he was 40 really? Five when he retired, and he could outpace some wingers. That's quite. Is, could... is that in football terms? I'm sure um, that's quite young for, in, in football refereeing terms. Um, Forty-five. Most, most elite referees will will call it doing the mid forties. Nigel Owens has just retired from elite referee, and he's mm-hmm. gone back down to sort of uh, lower levels. Gar says has gone on to coach. Is, is Nigel Owens still refereeing? I thought he would just Not... stop altogether. He's refereeing uh, back in Wales uh, at a local level. Okay, but, but how cool? How made... cool would that be being being at that level and then all of a sudden I'm Nigel Owens? How awesome would that be? Just uh... I, had, I had Chris White, a former uh, Premiership referee, referee me once. Really? Uh, he he just didn't have a game that weekend, so he went all on to uh, and just said, "Yeah, I'll, I'll do it." Yeah, you certainly um, won't get that in. Um, you certainly wouldn't get that in football. <laughs> I know. Um, what, most referees would rather just would, would rather do any game than no game. It's better to get out because ask my wife. She wants me out of the house on Saturday during the rugby season because she gets the telly to herself or she can. She's not yeah. me under her feet. Yeah, well, as I said in, in football, do... you won't get that now because what's his face? I, well, I, I've completely forgotten his name, and I know his name. Uh, what is the referee now in in England? Um, one of the best referees now. But his wife also referees the women's super. Uh, super uh, right. women's. Anyway, I, 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 someone will tell me, I'm sure, and it's literally on the tip of my tongue. That's going to annoy me. 
Um, anyway, he, his wife referees, and he went to watch her game, and I think the linesman, or lines girl, um, got injured, so he stepped in. He got in big yeah. trouble. He got in big trouble oh, by the FA, um, or the right. Premier League, PGL, whatever it is. Um, yeah, because a lot of our sort of higher up referees in my society will do a game on Saturday, and if they have nothing on during the week, they might oh go and do a game on Wednesday just to keep. That might come back to the whole fitness yeah. thing because, um, but in in obviously at the top level of football, you are employed to you know you are there to do a job. If you are then get injured, you can't then do your job. That is why the the, the serious mm. issue is that is. But um, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much yeah. for joining me. It's it's it's, no it's really interesting to know similarities and differences. And and like you've said, um, but before we did this, it's so it, it's really important to learn from other sports. Um, yeah. What what you can do better because you should always be trying to better yourself as as a referee, as a player, as in in, in anything in life. Um, so you should always ask and find out more. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, no worries, guys. If you enjoyed. Make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'll catch you next time. See you later, guys.